Exciting, exciting. Well, good afternoon, everybody. Afternoon. Honored to have you here with us today. Thank you. I see a lot of our transportation folks here today. Uh, we're here today to talk about Transform 66, something you have heard me talk about for a very, very long time. This is such an important project, not only for the entire Commonwealth of Virginia, but it is actually critical uh, for the Northern Virginia corridor. If we're going to continue to bring in businesses and do what we need to do, uh, we need to make sure we're increasing capacity. And the announcement today is we will have five lanes on each side, three free on each side, and then two hot lanes. So a total of 10 lanes, and it will increase capacity by 100,000 cars a day. Think about that by the time we get to 2040. This is a really game-changing event uh, for Northern Virginia, and I appreciate you all being here with us today. Uh, in addition, we will add new commuter bus. We will add over 4,000 park and ride spots to it. Uh, this will benefit, as I say, the entire Commonwealth of Virginia. Let me explain briefly how we got here today. Uh, many of you in the transportation industry have heard me talk long and hard about two deals that I inherited when I became governor. Two of the worst deals I've ever seen negotiated. I don't blame the contractors. I've never said I blame the contractors. If they outperform uh, the Commonwealth in negotiations, that is what it is. Uh, but the Route 460 deal, which we had spent $300 million of taxpayer money on a road that we had not even applied for a permit to go over 400 acres of wetlands through the Army Corps of Engineers. That was a very, very bad deal and a waste of taxpayer money. Uh, we re renegotiated that contract, and I'm glad we got back uh, almost $150 million, about $146 million we were able to recover uh, on Route 460. That was a P3 deal. In addition, the Midtown uh, Downtown Tunnel Project was another deal. I've always said probably one of the worst deals I've ever seen negotiated. Uh, we have now had to go back. We've eliminated the tolling, as you know. Um, on the Martin Luther King uh, Freeway Expressway. In addition, uh, Aubrey and I were just down there the other day uh, with some relief for those lower income individuals so that they have the ability now to go on that and will not cripple them financially. And uh, money was put up for that over the course, $500,000 for over the course of the next 10 years. So as we move forward, as I've always told my, my Secretary Aubrey Lane, I'd rather have no deal than a bad deal. There is no transportation project worth doing if you're going to have to live with a bad deal for many years to come. That all starts at the beginning of your negotiating process. So I said we need to reform it. I'm a huge advocate of P3s, but it's all how you negotiate a P3. So we work together with the General Assembly, and I want to thank Delegate Chris Jones, who spent many hours with myself and Secretary Lane and his team as we came up with a new process about how we deal with these uh, P3s and how we make it so that it works, that it's in the best interests of the state. One thing that I always looked at as it related to this project uh, was when uh, Secretary Lane brought the project to me, I didn't like the deal. I was very clear on the deal. It said it would cost the taxpayers $1 billion to do this deal. It had no corridor improvements. It had no transit. Uh, investments in it. That is not a deal I thought was in the best interest. I asked the secretary to go back and see what we could do if we could end that P3 process and start over. Uh, and he uh, came back and said, yes, we can do that. Uh, and we can renegotiate this, how we uh, handle this outside the Beltway 66 project. What I had always said and told Aubrey from the thir first thing is let's look at it as if we were one of the partners. Let's look at it as if the state was going to do it themselves. I think that's a good place to start. If we can do it ourselves, then we should do it ourselves. With the interest rates where they are today, I think we can do it. And I want to thank VDOT and everybody else. We could do it cheaper. We could do it faster. But we have the ability. So we added competition to the P3 process, which had not existed before. If the state weren't involved before, then it was just up to the private sector to determine themselves what they would put out. So we said we will be a participant. We went out and looked at the numbers. When the first deal was brought to me, as I say, it would have cost the taxpayers a billion dollars. It did not make sense to me. I said, let's renegotiate it and put ourselves and say the state will do it. As you know, many stakeholders, some lobbyists, some legislators, all hue and cry went up throughout the Commonwealth that if we did that, then no one would ever bid on our projects again. We would never build a road again in the Commonwealth of Virginia. Well, I'm happy to stand here today and prove the naysayers wrong once again. We are moving forward. Hello, Grinley. How are you? You want to come up here with us? Just pull this off, Grinley, if you would. Oh, get ready. Yes. 
Oh, that's what you're doing still. Yes, All right, there we go. <laughs> so, we approved the naysayers wrong. I'm very proud to say that we had two bidders in the project. And I am happy to announce today that the Express Mobility Partners uh, are the winner of this process that we have just gone through. This was an extensive process, and I'm very proud to say that the Express Mobility Partners won both the technical and the financial part of this process, bidding process. So they won both parts of it, and I compliment them for that. I'm happy to say that this project you see here is a swing for the better for the taxpayers of $2.5 billion. It is a $2.5 billion swing that we have here. Uh, it is a great project for the Commonwealth of Virginia. Not one single cent of taxpayer money will be used to construct outside the Transform 66. Not one cent of taxpayer money. Two and a half years ago, we were going to have to put up a billion dollars. I'm standing here today because of this new process that we went through. Not one single red cent of taxpayer money will be used as we go forward. Uh, the, the mobility partners will pay all upfront and all maintenance costs on this project. What is very exciting about this as well is, as you know, there had been $300 million from the CTB budgeted for this Transform 66 project. We're not using a penny of that $300 billion. That will now go back into smart scale which will take that fund from 700 million up to a billion dollars, which will benefit the entire Commonwealth of Virginia. That is a benefit to all of us. In addition, $300 million was budgeted for the NVTA, the Northern Virginia Transportation Authority. That money uh, was going to be used. We are not using a single penny of that, and that money will go back into the corridor. And I want to thank Marty Noe and their group for the great work that they have done on that. But that's another $300 million of savings. In addition, the Express Mobility Partners will spend $800 million over the next 50 years on transit projects. I remind you what I was originally presented two and a half years ago, no money for transit projects. The mobility partners will put $850 million up for that, which is so important for us. In addition, they will give us $350 million uh, to improve mobility in the corridor. And just for icing on the cake, on top of all of that, the Express Mobility Partners will write the Commonwealth of Virginia a check for five hundred million dollars that we will receive early next year on financial close. So I cannot tell you how excited we are uh, here in the Commonwealth uh, of what they're going to be able to do and I just thank everybody who has been part of this process. What we have always thought at the Commonwealth and what we've always thought in this administration, tolling revenue is very important. It is also very lucrative. That is the importance of these deals. And if we are going to give tolling revenue away, we are going to negotiate a very, very tough deal to give you those tolling rights going forward. I think this deal that we have negotiated today clearly is one of the best deals ever done in the country. Uh, I think we will now be a model for other states. We can now use this for future road projects. I've asked the secretary to begin to turbocharge to see where we can continue to do going forward. But Virginia will move forward on transportation. When you think of me standing here today and the projects that we have now going on in the corridor, Transform 66 outside the Beltway, we are moving forward for the first time inside the Beltway, for the inside 66, inside the Beltway for the first time in 30 years. We now have a deal there. We are widening 64 all the way from Hampton Roads all the way up to Richmond. I recently announced the Atlantic Gateway project, which will be transformative. 18 miles of new roads, as you know, going all the way up uh, to the uh, D.C. border, going all the way down past Fredericksburg to open up those uh, hot lanes that we have there. New rail track to open up passenger traffic through the entire Commonwealth of Virginia. A new bridge over the Rappahannock taking possession of the S-Line from Richmond all the way down to Raleigh for higher speed rail. We are transforming transportation here in the Commonwealth of Virginia. And I want to thank everybody who has worked so hard to put that uh, together. I do want to thank my Secretary of Transportation, Aubrey Lane. Uh, but if you look through this here and you see what we have done in renegotiating a contract, uh, this is a new day for the Commonwealth of Virginia, and this is a new model for every state in the United States of America. And I'm proud, once again, not a cent of taxpayer money will be used. And now, 
so much money will be used throughout the entire Commonwealth because we have freed this money up that will benefit all the citizens of the great Commonwealth of Virginia. I thank you, and now let me turn it over to our great Secretary of Transportation, Aubrey Lane. Thank you, Governor. Thank you, buddy. Wow. Uh, let me first start by saying the role Governor McAuliffe played in his leadership, not just in setting the example, but allowing us to negotiate from a position of strength. He wasn't saying, this is my number one project, I've got to have it before I leave. What he was saying is, fix this quarter and get a good deal. We're not signing bad deals. So, cannot overestimate that position to allow the Commonwealth to negotiate from. Um, as the governor said, this is the first project delivered under the reforms under House Bill 1886. He thanked uh, Chris Jones, but others in the legislature. This was bipartisan reforms that put together that for the first time we negotiated from what the Commonwealth would pay to do this, so we knew what we were allocating risk on, uh, and we had pure competition throughout the entire process. And one thing that pure competition will allow um, we can do all the rational business thinking and running out models, but what motivates a potential buyer, uh, how they bid, that is something you can't capture without pure competition, and that defines the pure market. And again, Governor McAuliffe led those reforms, and I want to thank the General Assembly. I uh, also want to point out that this was a 16-month process. A lot of people were involved. I want to thank my deputies, uh, Nick Donahue, Grinley Johnson, uh, uh, DRP chair uh, over here, uh, Jennifer Mitchell, Charlie Kilpatrick, and VDOT, his entire team. In our due diligence, we have been to Toronto, we have been to Texas, uh, we have been to North Carolina, we've been to many places researching the two teams and doing our due diligence. And I'll also point out Governor McAuliffe made sure that we have performance standards in these contracts, which means that uh, we will have accountability in how we monitor these projects going forward. Um, finally, I'd just like to, uh, to mention that before the governor takes uh, questions, um, the two teams that were involved, I uh, could not be more proud of their efforts. Uh, we knew, the governor said he believed in, I believe in the private sector. We gave them a target and both teams exceeded it. One by a pretty significant margin than the other, but both teams exceeded it. So we know that we have found a way to bring that uh, uh, ingenuity and those monies that are not in place of public dollars, but enhancing placing uh, public dollars. So very wanted to thank the two teams that were involved. Finally, just a, a note, uh, at 3 o'clock today, I will be briefing. I've already briefed the governor. I will be attesting, uh, uh, Commissioner Kilpatrick will be attesting to the P3 steering committee that we believe this is in the best interest of the Commonwealth. You know that's a new part of the law. So at 3 o'clock today, there will be a detailed briefing on where we've been, the whole process. Governor McAuliffe, we believe very much in accountability and transparency, and we will go through all that in detail at 3 p.m. down at the VDOT Auditorium.